one is old and effective and compassionate, yeah. has a heart and really cares about people, and one is old and has been charged with 91 felonies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean... Um, okay, interesting. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't understand why this is even a hard choice, really. I yeah. don't understand it. Yeah. But we have to go through the election, and hopefully people will realize what's at stake because it's an existential uh, question. I, what kind of country we're going to have, what kind of democracy we're going to have. And people who blow that off are not paying attention because it's not like Trump, his enablers, his empowerers, his allies are not telling us what they want to do. I mean, they're pretty clear about what kind of country they want. Yeah. Yeah, like where we want you to leave us alone, you psychopath. We don't want to get Vince fostered simply because, you know, we oppose your policies. Good heavens. Welcome back to the program. Dana Lash here with you. That woman is insufferable. Absolutely insufferable. She's essentially, well, she's not essentially saying she's like, oh, well, get over yourself. I don't understand. It, it, it's, it's not a hard choice. It, I mean, it's, it isn't. I don't know why anybody would think that it is. She's still, you know what? She's got all these flavors and she chooses salty cane. She's still salty over the fact that she lost. She cheated and she still lost in 2016. Hold up. First off, bookmark that. Welcome back to the program. Dana Lash with you, your lovable hostess, making friends, right? Listen all around the country. You can listen all over the internet. We're also on X. Channel 347 Direct TV. Simulcast of the radio program. To my point, she cheated and still lost. How bad do you just suck out loud that you still lose even after you cheat? And you still lose. That makes, that just proves how unlikable she is. Democrats are in a bit of a pickle. When I think of their future, I am giddy because it looks so bleak. Think about it. Who do they got? I want you to console yourself for a moment. I know we talk about though because the primary got started super early. But think about this for a minute. <laughs> who do they have? No, for real. Who do they have? Who? Who? No, really. The guy who looks like a lazy town character, not the band, but the yeah, the villain. Villain. Yeah. Isn't that a band name? The Lazy Town. The Lazy Town villain. No, no, no. What? Sorry, sorry. Oh, hold no, up. No, no, no. I know what you're what talking band about. is it? When they the lyrics were like "Be my butterfly, sugar baby," and I died. What? <laughs> <laughs> we're going with Lazy Town, Crazy Town. That's what it was. Crazy. Same difference. Jeez, plasticine, everything. Um. Anyway. Gavin Newsom looks like he's a character from Lazy Town, and he's about as bad as that Robbie Rotten guy. He, um, the train stuff is just by itself crazy baggage for him. I mean, he's got a lot, and apparently his marriage isn't exactly an asset. I'm just saying, there's a lot of stuff that's been written and said. You know what I mean? Like, there's lots of baggage there. I'm just saying, like, if he runs, you know how the ladies come out of the woodwork to make accusations, and in his case, it might be true. That being said, who do they have? Okay, so move Newsom aside because he's a liability. Cuomo was going to be their dude. They were grooming him. That's why he came out with that book and all that stuff. He wanted to have this, like, national recognition, and he really wanted to, you know, he wanted to be the guy. He was going to be the guy. And then he killed all them old people in the nursing homes with his edict, right, during COVID. That ruined him. His brother's embarrassing, so he's ruined. Who do they got? Big Gretch? Big Gretch up in Michigan, trans Paul Bunyan. <laughs> okay. It's true. Tell me I'm a liar. I was going to step in with another name. Yeah. Uh, isn't Marianne Williamson still in the race or no? Who? Remember the... the um, you the get a crystals? free crystal with every yeah, vote. The, the crystals and The crystals oils. and oils lady. Yeah. She's running, right? Isn't she running on the Democrats? If you side? just put some of the oils between your toes, your flu goes away. That I don't could know. be true. I am not with you right now. Settle down over there, bacteria T. Settle down. I don't know who. So Big Gretch, just so you know, Big Gretch was. I, why do we sweep this under the rug? The FBI literally tried to entrap people into a into a a plot that they created to kidnap her so that they could arrest people. And then 
when the guys that they were claiming were in the militia were like, wow, this is crazy. We're not involved in this. They had to like try to stretch it to try to hook the net, get their hooks into people. It was, it, we just sweeped that under the rug that that was literally an FBI plot involving Big Gretch and she went along with it. I'm just saying, I feel like she's compromised. So who else do they have? Poot Booty Juice? No, he's not going to run. Fudge Bootin Juice up there and where is he at now? I don't know. What? Him? Not him. Yeah, I biden his name. It's okay. I, I mean, he can't do any, he can't even wear a hard hat properly. So him, they literally have nobody, guys. They have nobody. Remember they were going to do the Castro brothers from Texas? You remember this? Their mom was in La Raza. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were going to do the Castro brothers, and then they realized they were dumb, and that was bad. Sidebar. I, this is one of my favorite stories in the history of political stories. So the story involving the, the Castros, excuse me, allergies. The story involving the Castros. One of them was, hold on, let me look, I don't know, which one was it? Castroni. One, one of them was the mayor of San Antonio. They're identical twins, right? So Julian Castro was, he was, he also was in the Obama administration. You had Julian and Joaquin Castro. And he was the mayor of San Antonio. This was like back in 2009. He joined Obama's cabinet in 2014. And there was one point when they were having their mayoral race, right? They were going to have, he had an election coming up. And, you know, they do the Riverwalk Parade down in San Antonio. They get their little, their little uh, floats, their little barges, and they go down the river. They have a parade like that. And it was, I think, Julian Castro that had a fundraiser. And so his, he substituted his identical twin to stand in for him and wave at people and pretend that he was the mayor. I am not even kidding you. And it was a local reporter that accident that accidentally uncovered it. He caught him, and he's like, "Wait a minute, where's your brother at?" And he's like, "Oh, oh, I'm caught. I he's at a fundraiser." And so they wrote about, "Oh my gosh, Julian Castro literally substituted his brother Joaquin in the parade for him to wave at everybody and act like he was the mayor." And their defense, I kid you not, I've written about it. You can Google it. I think it was KSAT that wrote about it. They, their defense was, well, we can't help it. I'm not kidding you. The verbatim quote, I will never forget this verbatim quote. We can't help it that we look alike. That was their defense. Their defense was, you know, they can't help it that, you know, we can't help it that we look alike. And then uh, Joaquin said, you know, they just have me step onto the barge. And before I knew it, people were yelling at me, Julian, Julian, and, and, you know, calling him the mayor. And he, he goes, well, I was shouting back at them. I'm not the mayor. I'm his brother, but no one heard me. And other people were like, you did not shout anything back, you absolute stooge. That was their defense. I'm not even kidding. Can you imagine what they would do if he, I made this, I made this point at the time when the story came out. I'm like, can you imagine what they would do if one of them got to the White House? That's weird. They're already doing the switcheroo thing. That's, no. So that was their, they, they groomed, they were grooming one of the brothers. That's why they had him in the Obama administration and he gave the, uh, the speech he gave the keynote address at, I think it was the 2012, it was the 2012 election and, or the 2012 DNC, their convention, but they never went anywhere because they're really dumb as a box of rocks. So they, that was abandoned. So, and they're nuts. Like if you ever read their tweets, they're just oh, me hoi ni hoi crazy. It's just it's so bad. So they don't have anybody else. Who? There's no up and coming person. There's no like they don't have any young guns. Who else do they have? Think about it real hard. Who else do they got? I'm only thinking of the independents now, like uh, RFK Jr. and Jill Stein. Those. Um, They're Democrats. They're not independents. Well, I know, but you know what I mean. <laughs> they they would caucus with Democrats. But that's I mean that's it. Yeah, they don't have anybody. So I feel pretty confident. You know, like uh, the future's bright. I'm just saying. They, they don't really have a lot. So her, she's so bitter. You had these old people jockeying to get into, if they had not, if Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama had not sucked up all the energy in the DNC, there would be like room for other people. But one of the things that they famously did was they did not encourage younger politicians to protect their legacy. They were very, very territorial about that. And that's to the downfall of the party.